This is not the video I wanted to make. But we had to make it anyway. Now, you've heard us talk a lot about the RV industry in the past, and there are some things that we've kind of held back on that we feel we really have to say. I was very optimistic during the Hershey RV show because we saw a number of different manufacturers RVs that looked like they had better quality in them. Right. But as we went to more and more shows and looked at different models, we were really disappointed, folks. A lot of the newer models are not really at the place we would have hoped they would be by now. And even my favorite brands have been disappointing. John and I often do RV tours at different RV shows. We want to show you a few things that we found while we were doing RV tours, but we really wanted to go in depth and look at the quality of some of these RVs. Right. And boy, were we disappointed. And it wasn't just with the really inexpensive brands. Yeah. We looked at, at RVs ranging from $90,000 to over $300,000. And we saw the same problems and the same issues in all of those RVs. To be honest, I've heard the excuse about you driving your RV in an earthquake, but at, at some point, the quality is still unacceptable because it's, it's bad even before delivery. We've seen people having issues with their RVs from the time of purchase. They get their brand new RV, they've been told that it's had a PDI by the dealership, right. they get it home and they cannot use it. It ends up spending months and months and months in the shop. And we've had viewers, multiple viewers, reach out to us and ask us, is there anything that we can do because <laughs> yes. we have a YouTube presence to help? And unfortunately, our channel right now is so small that no one is really going to listen to us. No. And we've tried passing them on to larger channels to see if maybe they can help. But this situation is way worse than what I thought it would be at this point. In fact, if you look back at some of our older videos, John and I talked about how 2024 would be the year to buy an RV, and this is why. Back in 2020, during COVID, there was a shortage of parts, there was a shortage of, lab of experienced labor, and there was increased demand. So the manufacturers were putting out RV after RV at a record-breaking pace, yeah. and no one was paying attention to the quality of these RVs, and the line didn't have the experience it used to have prior to 2019. Now, I'm not saying that they were perfect back in 2019 either, but, but they it were better. It was better, and it's just gotten so much worse, folks. Now, we're not RV inspectors. No. Uh, we're not experts, but we do know the difference between something that's built well and something that's crap. Did I say that word? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. I never say that word. Something that's garbage. There we go. Is that better? Yes. Okay, th this is how infuriating this is. So right here in this clip that we're going to show you now, we're looking at an RV that we saw recently in a show. The wood is rough cut. And the bottom of that drawer is pretty flimsy. I can never put pots in there. If you would have put pots into this drawer, guaranteed after your first or second trip, those pots and pans or whatever you put in that drawer are just gonna break right through it. And when you right. see poor quality in the fit and finish, that should be a red flag to anyone who's looking to buy an RV, whether that RV is new or used. Let's look at our next one, John. Thin paneling that they use over the bedroom bed is buckling and coming down from the ceiling. It's not flush. Now that is such an easy fix, John. Yeah. I mean, that is something that should never happen. Why is that hanging down on a brand new RV that just came from the factory and probably had a PDI that they're trying to sell to somebody who won't even notice it? And it's a show model. That should not happen. No, it should. Let's take a look at our next one. Here we have some ceiling trim that is buckling. It's just coming out. This was one of my favorites that we saw yes. while we were at this RV show. I mean, I really loved this RV, but then when we went back and, to, and started looking at the quality of the fit and finish, 
I was like, holy cow, come on. I, do you think we're that stupid? Are the consumers that dumb? Why do we continue to buy stuff like this? How do we overlook these things? Well, like I mentioned before, people say that's an RV. That's, you know, you're going to have to fix it. And, you know, that's something I think that we as consumers have to change. We really have to change the narrative that this is what you expect from an RV. That when you buy an RV, it's an earthquake going down a highway at 60 miles per hour or however they want to want to phrase that because that still doesn't mean that you should not expect good quality when you purchase it. It doesn't mean that when I get a brand new RV, my slides shouldn't work. I have a leak. My trim is falling off before I have even driven 100 miles. Right. That um, 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 walls are buckling and weak. That just should not occur. No. And I think that we as consumers are enabling the RV industry by continuing to buy. Last year... Yeah. We purchased a diesel pusher. After our first RV, we really wanted to have that nice, comfortable ride of a diesel pusher. Right. And we purchased one at an RV show. We did. We got a fantastic price for it. The manufacturer <laughs> even kicked in some money for it. Yep. And then they delivered us an RV that looked like this. We found, uh, as, as we looked at the outside, we opened the cargo bay doors and around the tops of the rubber seals, there were clear signs of rust, and we didn't know where that had come from, but it had dripped onto the rubber seals and dried up, and it was a powdery rust substance on the seals. It was everywhere. It was. It was. And it wasn't limited to one cargo bay. No. And how does a brand new RV have rust that's accumulated so much that it's even on the rubber? Rubber yes. is not supposed to rust. Yeah, it, we knew it came from somewhere else. Uh, we also noticed that the, the cargo bay doors have these pistons on them. Well, many of the pistons, they're supposed to be secured by two screws into the body of the RV. Well, many of those screws had sheared completely off. The screw heads were gone. Some were hanging by one screw. A couple... Both screws had come out, and the pistons were just hanging down in this cargo bay. How do you leave the factory like that, with the pistons hanging down in the cargo bay? How does it even leave the factory? How does no one say, hey, there's a problem here? How does no one say, you know what, I screwed this in too tight, it popped out, let's right. fix it. Let's fix it. How do you just say, oh, we'll just ship it anyway? And, and you know what? I actually feel bad and I know this is going to be surprising, yeah. but I actually, and I, I know, I'm, I'm getting worked up, but I actually feel bad for the dealerships because right. the dealerships are getting this garbage in and it costs them money right. to and fix it. I mean, I know that they get reimbursed some from the manufacturer, but right. if it works anything like the automobile industry, they probably don't get paid as much to fix stuff from the, that's broken from the manufacturer as they do from a customer who's coming in with a problem, you know, let's say an, an older RV or right. wants something done to their RV. So there's really no incentive for them to have to keep fixing all this stuff. No. I mean, how much stuff can, I mean, how big of a service department do these places have? Okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> finish, finish what you were saying. Well, to continue, as we went into the door, we saw two more problems immediately. Around the door frame, somehow, I don't know how they did this, but the door frame was dented so that it was, it was almost seamless and then there was a gap going down the side. And you could see clearly that something had hit it right at the edge of the door frame. And right next to the door, there was also another piece. Uh, I don't know what it was. It was a pretty big piece, but it wasn't secured at all. It was just sitting there and... If we had hit bumps or anything, it would have fallen down. And we said, "What? what is this? We don't know what this is or where it goes. Because it wasn't even, it wasn't screwed in or clamped in. or I don't know how it was supposed to be secured, but it was just sitting there. Yeah. The door to the bedroom was a two-piece sliding door. It had a, one piece that slid into another, which slid all the way over. Well, at the top, we noticed the thing was hanging crooked. And at the top, where it hung from the track... They hadn't screwed all the screws in all the way, and one of the pieces was coming loose. It was coming out. So that was 
a problem. And in the bathroom, under the vanity, wires were clearly hanging out there. Yeah, because, you know, water and electrical, they mix very well together. Now, I do want to say, one caveat, the drivetrain was amazing, okay? The, the Freightliner freight rider. part was just, it was gold. It was really good. The thing rode great, it ran great. Yeah. All that was great. And it's the same thing with our RV. If you right. guys watch our channel at all, you know that we've had lots of different problems with our RV. And the first time we went back to the manufacturer, we had almost, what, 20, 30 items right. that needed to be repaired. And it's the same thing with our chassis. The Ford chassis yeah. has been fantastic. Now, we had one issue with the spark plug wires. And that, that was a known problem. That was a known problem. Ford took care of it, took right. care, care of us with paying for it, even though we were out on the road. But it, we have not had any problems no. with the chassis. You care for that Ford chassis, and it'll take care of you. This Everything and every issue that we've had has been with what was added to that chassis at the RV manufacturer. Right. And, <laughs> uh, and you know, the, the thing that is most disturbing is that all of these things will be rectified with simple quality control right. gates from the manufacturer. At each phase of manufacturing, as you put, I'm putting in the plumbing, okay. Somebody comes through, takes a look, check, it's good. It, just a senior person or a lead right. engineer or whoever takes a look and says, this is good. Somebody puts in, the, puts in the cabinets. Somebody else comes along, takes a look at it, check, it all looks good. We're good, yep. right? And I can't see how this would cost them so much more money. I, I, maybe it would, I don't know. But it can't, it can't cost more than what it's costing these manufacturers to get all of these RVs fixed once they're out the door. No, it's always better to do it right the first time. Then you don't have to go back. Ab absolutely. That's, that's exactly it, John. One other thing that I need to mention is that those quality control gates only go so far. You also have to use quality parts. And we're not seeing quality parts being used right. in these RVs. Case in point, let me show you some more videos of RVs that I walked through while at the RV show. What I'm showing you here is the wall between the bedroom and the bathroom in this RV, if you want to call it a wall. This is a flimsy piece of material that will not stand up to anything. That This material should not be in an RV. Now, next, we're looking at the bathroom in an RV. This was a Class C RV, and the sticker price for this RV was almost $200 thousand dollars the pictures don't actually show it as well as we would hope but it, it was it was bulging we noticed it look at that bulge look at that bulge oh yeah, yeah. you can see that <laughs> come on you're wondering what's going on there and it looks like the trim in the corner is not quite right either no it, it was not put in there properly at all if it looks good if the fit and finish looks good mm -hmm. everything else is most likely done the well, right way. Yes. Look at the sealant behind this, this sink. Uh, I'm not even sure if that's supposed to be part of the backsplash or what, but it, it, they used an abundance of sealant there, and it's a very poorly done job. You know what that tells me, John? What? That makes me think that something probably wasn't properly lined up, like maybe there was a gap somewhere. And they used it as filler. They used the sealant <laughs> as filler so that yeah. that back tie that tile that backsplash whatever you want to call it would stay right and not have a huge gap between it well it has a huge gap it's just filled with it's whatever just... that goo is <laughs> now this one almost seems like nothing compared to everything else we saw yeah but this is like wallpaper just kind of yeah just a little excess wallpaper down there that's not quite glued back or cut i don't know you could glue it you could cut it you could cut it you could glue it you could do it right the first time and then we even notice with the RV furniture that the quality of that isn't what it used to be either. We saw furniture where the, the upholstery was not put on as well as it should be, so there were wrinkles in odd spots. And, and look, I understand that 
a lot of RV manufacturers don't make their own furniture. That's true. I get it. Yeah. But my gosh, at least have some expectation of quality from your suppliers. Don't just take anything. Pressure them yourselves to say, hey, we're not taking this because we're going to be responsible for it later on. I mean, there's, I, I, if I have a business and I'm building something for my customers, I'm going to try to put the right materials. And if my suppliers are giving me garbage, I'm not taking delivery of that or I'm sending it back to them. You know who you remind me of? What? The guy at the RV dealership we went to that said he wouldn't accept anything. Yeah, I got to tell you, we did. We did meet one RV dealership that yeah. I would trust because he, was he, small. Would, he said... <laughs> we saw his RVs, and his RVs looked fantastic. They All did. of them looked they were and I beautiful. Was, even even <laughs> even from manufacturers that we like, yeah, don't we really were... expect good quality from. And he said it's because he has in the past, and the manufacturers know this. Yeah. He has returned RVs, or not actually not accepted delivery of RVs if they didn't meet his expectations. Right. He expected them to be clean. Yep. He expected them to have passed some sort of an inspection. Right. And he ex he expected them. What? To not have like all of these visual defects that we right. see in other RVs. Any That's of the true. Visual defects. That's very, very true, John. Yeah. He was great. B O E R V. <laughs> I'll call him out. You'll call him out. <laughs> I sure will. Okay, here's just another example. There's a big hole in the wall. It has something to do with the way the door was and it just kept banging into there, but nobody really cared because you know who cares about a hole in a wall? It's a tiny hole. It doesn't matter. Look at that. My finger could almost fit in it. It's and look, look, look. It's peeling too. What do you mean it's a tiny hole? A little glue. Yeah, but they should have glued it with before they delivered it. I mean, to the to the to the dealership. I know you're right. We don't like to to to, to come up with problems without having a solution. Right. I don't know though what the solution is, other than people stop buying these RVs, or we get together. And we lobby. And, you know, I'm not one for a lot of regulation. Right. But maybe we need something similar to what the automobile industry has. Well, I mean, even when you buy massive trucks like semis, you, you don't see these problems in those either. Oh, I don't know. I never bought a semi. Have you? Well, I'm thinking they're built just like cars. I don't know about buses, the ones that buses. Sleeper. We know about buses. We do. We know, And the buses that we bought when we... So John and I, when we were in college, we yep. drove buses for our university. And John was a mechanic on the buses. Yep. When those buses were delivered to yeah, the university, they were, they were in good shape. shape. They were in great shape. They were in good shape. They went right on the road. Exactly. And I understand that you know it's not automated like the automobile industry, that everything is handmade. I do think that they could put more automation into it. They need to, you know, but so much is done by hand. There's so much room for mistakes. And it's not just that it's done by hand, but the factory workers know that who's going to check what's being done. Who cares? Nobody cares. Nobody yeah. cares if I send this out with a big hole in it. Nobody cares if this stair is dented or this door is dented or if the electrical wiring's not right. Nobody cares if I'm not using the correct fittings on the plumbing. Right. The dealers will fix it. And uh, nobody cares that campers can't go camping when they buy these new RVs because they're sitting at the dealership waiting to be fixed. Because they're already sold at that point. Yes. So, I mean, we, we do have a couple of things that we can tell you. One is, please, don't ever, and I don't care if you're buying used or new, yep. don't ever, ever buy an RV without getting an inspection from a certified NRVIA inspector. And actually, this is what I would do, personally, okay. and this is what we did. Yeah. So, the dealership does a little bit of cleanup of the RV before you get it. Then you get your inspector in to come and take a look at it. Right. Now, if we had done that, we would have never have known that there was a potential issue with water leaking or whatever in the RV we purchased because they might have cleaned up that rust. That's right. So we actually, and they, they were kind of got it. What, what I actually would recommend is that if you order an RV, you go there and you see it first because chances are then you'll see a lot of the things that are probably wrong with it. And then you can decide whether or not you purchase it. If it passes 
your expectations and things look good, then I would call in your inspector because right. you don't want to like have a lot of known issues before you pay an inspector. Mm -hmm. Then call your inspector in, have your inspector come and take a look at it. Once you know the things that are wrong with the RV, then you can make a decision on whether or not you want to buy that RV because there are some things that you know are very easy to fix, right? Like, yeah. you know, wallpaper or, you know, maybe a dent or something. I, I don't know. To, yeah. Give a list there, of things, John. <laughs> there are a lot of minor things that, that can be easily fixed. I mean, you might see a paint problem or you might see a, a trim problem. The little things like that can be easily fixed. Now, right. Other things like water problems, that's a big deal. Yeah, so water problem, a slide problem, depending oh, yes. on what the issue is. Electrical would, is really a big problem. Things like that, I would walk away from. I would just eat the money from the inspector. Yeah. And there are certain things I would just walk away from because even though you've had an inspector and it gets fixed, is your inspector going to come back and inspect it again? Of course, if you're willing to pay them more money. Right. But on top of that, you don't know, like even after an inspector comes and you're driving down the road, things can still go wrong after it's been fixed. The other thing that we can do is not buy these RVs, you know, and I feel really badly as a whole for the RV industry because I think things are going to go really south. Yeah. I think that more, I think that Thor might come in and buy more. They or another will. company like Thor yeah. might buy more companies. What we're seeing a lot of is fewer and fewer options because Winnebago owns Grand Design, owns Newmar, owns other things. Right. Thor, they own so many different brands. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Forest yeah. River. Right. Now they, they, have, they own yep. lots of different brands. Forest River. And I think we're just going to see as, you know, we're going to see more and more of these manufacturers, the smaller ones, or maybe even the ones with good quality being eaten up by the, by the bigger ones. And I don't want that to happen. And the other thing that we're seeing right now is that the RV industry is in a lot of trouble. And I think that right now they are at a crossroads with the state of the economy and people having less discretionary income. Right. And the interest rate being so high, there are fewer people who may want an RV that can actually purchase an RV at this point in time. And we are seeing the effects. If you look at any of the stats, um, Ellis RV does a really good job with doing the stats, yeah. as does um, Josh, the RV nerd. He's really good. Yeah. yeah. If you watch any of their videos, you will see how the amount of sales and shipments are decreasing in the RV industry. And at some point that means layoffs for the people who are working. I do not blame the workers on the floor no. because the workers on the floor take direction from their leadership teams. I blame the people in charge at the manufacture, RV manufacturers because they should be taking charge they should be saying, okay, folks, now we're going we're gonna to start delivering quality to people because that's what they want, and they're not. And you're going to see RVs like Brinkley's, which are, I don't want anybody to think if you buy a Brinkley that it's going to be 100% perfect because well, they have yeah, issues too. No machine too. is 100% perfect. No, and we've spoken to people who have purchased Brinkley, Brinkley's, yeah. and they've had problems with them too. But but not as many as I've seen with some of these other manufacturers. Yeah, they're beautiful machines. They and really are nice. In fact, John even broke something on one. I, I but but we found and we found that same thing broken on multiple RV or multiple yeah. Brinkleys as we've done our RV tours. So well, I think it's because it's a new item. Yeah, it's kind of a new thing, and you know, I, I've also seen another trend you haven't mentioned. Now that you mention the interest rates and the prices, yes. I noticed that. Manufacturers, instead of, I guess, trying to manage their pricing, they're putting out lower end options. Yes, John, that's called decontenting. Yes. So here's the other thing. The, the cost of an RV has just gone up so much. It's no longer sustainable. It is. And I think that you know, the automobile industry is having the same problem that between 2020, yeah. 2021, 2022 into 2023, um, when there was issues sourcing and, you know, 
prices were, were rising for so many different things. The automobile industry is now considering lowering the MSRP. Mm. And I think that the RV industry has to think about it as well because yeah. that MSRP is not a realistic number for no. the value that you're getting. It's not. And it's artificially inflated based on greed from those difficult times. Yeah. I'm just going to call it out like it is, John. <laughs> it was pure greed. It was we could take advantage of people. People will pay more. People, we have waiting lists for RVs. Yep. We are just going to charge what we can get and not think about what the impact's going to be later. Yeah. And that's exactly what happened. And now you can buy an RV very easily. You can walk in to any dealership and buy an RV for 50% off. You can. What does that tell you about that MSRP? It's, it's garbage. It's imaginary It's number. garbage. Folks, I love RVs. Yep. I hate doing videos like this because I love the lifestyle. I don't want to dissuade anybody from the lifestyle. We just want to caution them. I want to caution you. And I want you to, 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 to be able to enjoy this. Buy something before 2019. Yes. Definitely. If you're looking to buy an RV, it's okay. Even John and I are considering used now after yeah. what we've seen in some of the newer RVs. But I, get out there, enjoy it, have fun, camp, build bonds. It's a great way to see the country, I'll tell you. It's a wonderful way to see the country, and it's a wonderful way to adventure. If you're enjoying our content, please go ahead, please, please, please subscribe to our channel. Yep. Go ahead and hit that like button. It really helps YouTube to get our videos out to more people when it sees engagement with the videos that we have. All right, get out there and enjoy your adventure.